In this video, let's discuss the interpretation of the parameters uh, from the logistic link function binomial regression model. And to do that, we'll consider a sort of simplified case, but of course the results that we discuss here generalize in, in just the way you think they will. Um, so let's consider a data set with a response having values y1 through yn. And let's suppose that these are all Bernoulli and independent. So that means each one of these uh, yi's are zeros or ones. And that means the mean for each one is just the probability of success pi. And we have two predictors, uh, x1 and x2. So using the logit link function, uh, we see that the linear predictor is related to the probability of success based on this relationship here, right? The linear combination of predictors and parameters is equal to the log of the probability of success for the ith measurement over 1 minus that probability. And notice here that I have hats on everything. And that's to emphasize the fact that based on the last video, we could estimate our parameters using maximum likelihood estimation. And so what we end up seeing in R and you know what we end up seeing based on sample data are estimates of the true parameters. But the interpretation that we look at is holds for the estimates or for the true parameters themselves. Right, with the caveat that the estimates are not exactly those parameters, but have nice properties like they're unbiased and they're consistent. So I think it will be important for us to understand or review the concept of odds before we uh, can really grasp the interpretation of the, the betas in the linear predictor. So let's do that quickly. Um, so suppose we have an event E and the probability that E occurs is P. So then we can define the odds in favor of E in the following way. So we could call those odds O sub E and it's just the ratio of probability uh, that E will occur to the probability that E will not occur. So as an example, simple example, uh, suppose we have a bias coin such that the probability of heads is three-fourths, that means the probability of tails is one-fourth, then could we calculate the odds of the event E the coin lands on heads twice in two flips? Well, I think we can. So O sub E will be as defined above, P over one minus P, but here we just have to find out what P is. Well, the probability of success in this case is the probability that E will occur. And the probability that E will occur means that the coin lands on heads on the first flip. That's three-fourths. These events are independent, so the probability that it lands on heads on the second flip is also three-fourths. So independence allows us to multiply those probabilities together. And then we can divide by one minus that probability above, so the product of three-fourths and three-fourths. And we should get in the numerator 0.5625, in the denominator 0.4375, and this gives us odds of about 1.5. Two nine. So that tells us that the odds are in favor of event E, and you know the higher the odds, the more in favor uh, we would be of event E. All right. Now that we've defined the odds, we can see that the logit link function is given in terms of the odds of success. So we've got our linear predictor here. Um, this equality holds because we're using, uh, you know, we've chosen the logit link. 
So this interpretation that we're about to go through only holds for that link function. It doesn't hold, for example, for the probit link function. But notice that the logit link function is given in terms of the odds, right? It's the, actually the log odds. So that gives us a hint as to how we can interpret the beta parameters. So first let's start with the intercept, beta naught. So beta naught represents the log odds of success when all predictors are equal to zero. And of course you could turn that into something about uh, not just the log odds, but the log, uh, sorry, but the odds of success, and you would have to exponentiate. So if you took e raised to the beta naught, then you would have uh, the odds of success when all predictors are equal to zero. All right, so now what about the, uh, the slope parameters? So if we think about a one unit increase in one of the predictors while holding all of the others constant, here all of the others is just one, but of course this extends to having many predictors. So let's just think about increasing x1 by one unit and fixing x2. So this will increase the log odds of success by beta 1. But it might be more intuitive, uh, easier to understand if we thought in terms of the odds. So in that case we'd have to exponentiate. Right? If we exponentiate both sides, we would have you know, e raised to the beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2. And if we have a sum in the exponents, we have um, multiplication of e raised to each one of those things. And then exponentiating the right-hand side gives us just the odds. So in that case, we could say a unit increase in, for example, x1 with all other predictors held constant increases the odds of success by e raised to the beta j. And that's a multiplicative increase. There are clear advantages to models with a straightforward interpretation. If the model is correct, then we know how much each predictor contributes to changes in odds and probabilities of, su of success, and that's a clear benefit. And I think it's, there are trade-offs, of course, but there are clear benefits to models like these, which are interpretable, over and above some other more complicated models that you see in machine learning, for example, neural nets, which don't have such a straightforward interpretation and in some instances don't really have an interpretation at all. So in the next video we'll take this knowledge that we've had of binomial regression and the interpretation of that model and take a look at some real data in R.